What's up? So we've got about a week before this car goes to Laguna Seca, and after the last event, we have a serious tire issue. So it is out with the old wheel and tire setup and into something grippier. So the old setup was pretty nice to start out with, but the Toyo R1Rs had a very small temperature window. They would start off pretty uh, greasy and they would end up pretty greasy by the end of a session, especially out here in California. These Hankook RS4s are much better received, much better reviewed. There are a lot more people that run them, so I get a lot more data. We're also gonna start on a fresh set with uh, our new alignment, so they should wear pretty evenly. And these are 225 instead of 205, like the last ones. So this is the widest that I am allowed to go in the enthusiast class. And uh, that should give us a little more contact patch and a little more grip. So the wheels and tires are a big part of the setup for Laguna Seca, but that is not the only new thing that is going on the Yaris. Since this Yaris was originally an automatic, it didn't actually have a tachometer in the gauge cluster. So I've got a gauge cluster from Japan shipped and ready to install. So sit back and enjoy this view of the back of my arm as I install this. So I didn't really show this before, but this is the original gauge cluster. And as you can see, it only has the speedometer it doesn't have a tachometer. That's why I've been using this little guy down here. But now that I got the JDM one, yes, it's gonna read in kilometers, but it's gonna have a tachometer and I can do away with that one. Well, here's hoping this is plug and play. So the tack is working fine, but after going out on a test drive, I noticed a little problem. So I thought I had done this JDM swap, but apparently the Speedo doesn't work. Luckily, I've got one more piece that might actually solve that problem. So now I've got this AEM Solo 2 lap timer installed. It seems like something that wouldn't be that big of a deal. I mean, I get timing from the event. The problem is that when you're in the middle of a session, you wanna have a little bit of timing so that you know whether the lap you did was better or worse than the previous lap. When I get off of the track after doing six or eight laps and it says my fourth lap was the quickest, it's really hard to remember what that lap was like and what I did in that corner and what made it fast. Here, because it's GPS tracked, it's gonna be able to not only show me my lap times as they're happening, but it's gonna be able to show me my plus or minus off of the best lap as I'm going through the lap. So I can see if I take a line in a corner that's a new experiment, whether that slows me down or not. I've got it set up to show my miles per hour via GPS because A, my new uh, dash has kilometers per hour instead of miles per hour, and B, it, um, it doesn't work because this is from a JDM model that all had ABS and they pull their speedometer from the ABS wheel sensor, not wherever this one pulls it from. Uh, so I would have to do some rewiring to get that to work. I might do it eventually. I might figure out, hopefully it's just a repin, but for now, 
I have my speed down here and it'll show me my best lap time here. Now, what else will happen is I've got it set up so these LEDs on the side will light up red or green depending on whether I am currently going faster or slower than my best lap time. Hey, does anybody remember when this video was about wheels? So the wheels arrived very late. So late that I've actually packed up all my cameras already, but they're here. So we're gonna go get these tires mounted and balanced and ready for the track. Whew. So not many tire places open at 5.30 on a Friday, uh, but luckily smoking tire over here was uh, open and uh, they're getting everything mounted up. So I'll have wheels and tires for Laguna Seca. New wheels and tires look great, but the Yaris is already on the trailer ready to go. So the first time I actually get to put these on is in the parking lot in Laguna Seca the day before the event. All right, so this weekend snuck up on me so much I haven't actually got a chance to talk about the new wheels. These are Koenig Hexaform 15 by eights, replacing my Koenig Heliums that were 15 by six and a half. These were mounted with 205 tires. These are 225s, so the main reason for going wider is to be able to run a wider tire. That is gonna give me more of a contact patch. It's gonna give me more grip. Also, these tires were available in 225s. I think I could have gotten these too, but I needed new tires anyway, because these are pretty thrashed. Um, I haven't actually done that much with them. Uh, they've only done five autocross events and uh, the uh, the two track days that you've seen um so they didn't survive all that well but they are a couple years old we started this uh project at the beginning of i think these tires were bought in early 2019 um and uh yeah so they, they've, they've seen a little bit of uh wear but uh, i'm still kind of surprised at how fast they wore out and uh what they were like at the end of their life. These ones though, a uh, there's a lot more information on, there's a lot more people running them even at this event. So if I'm feeling something weird, I can talk to somebody who's running these tires, be like, hey, why does it take two or three laps to warm up? It's like, oh, okay, well, this, 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 this. That's the hope anyway. Either way, I should have more contact patch and more grip and I haven't even had a chance to put them on the car until now, and it looks like they clear. I had uh, five millimeter spacers uh, with these wheels that I can take off uh, to make sure that they're uh, sitting properly. Um, I might keep them on the front just in case of rubbing, but I took them off of the back. Um, and we've got that to play around with. So we got a track day tomorrow. We'll see how it all goes.